Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff and it's gift giving season. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different in between project videos. I wanna tell you about 10 things that I've used a whole lot over this last year in the shop, things that would make fantastic gifts for a maker in your life, even if that maker is you. Okay, so here's the deal. I wanna do a list of 10 things that I've used a whole lot in the shop over the last year. And these aren't necessarily new things. You've probably seen me use them, but they're things that have been very valuable and I wanna just share that list with you. So I've got 10-ish things. All of them will be linked down in the description. Full disclosure, those are affiliate links. So if you use those links to buy these things, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help out the channel a little bit. So I would appreciate it. Now, let's get onto the list in no particular order. First, is number seven. So number seven is a set or a brand of really cool toolboxes I found on Instagram a couple of years ago. They came out of Japan and so the shipping was really expensive. So I ordered like three or four different ones at the same time to save on shipping. Well now you can get these things on Amazon and there's another brand that looks to be exactly the same with a different name and they're even cheaper. They're even using the same pictures. That brand is Trusco. I'll link those down in the description. They're absolutely worth getting. This is not a job site toolbox. This is a really cool, sturdy toolbox that you would wanna keep in your shop or maybe even under your desk or in your vehicle. They come in several different sizes and options and color options and stuff, but they're all pretty awesome. This is a really basic kind of lunchbox style toolbox. All of these are stamped steel. They got a really nice finish on them. This is a black one that I keep in my vehicle and just keep some basic tools in it. But this one is really cool. Not only is the blue a fantastic color, but it's just a very cool fold out box. It doesn't have any latches on the top. You just kind of swing the top open and then those two sections can come out even more and then you have the bottom section down there. Now you've also got little pull out metal dividers that store nicely in the ends. You can put them in and divide up the section just like you want to. These are just really cool boxes and it's something that looks like they were made 50 years ago, maybe even like 80 years ago. They're very cool. I love having them around. I like the way they look. I like the way they work. They're good boxes. That was number seven. So now it's time for number two. And it's this giant cutting mat that's on this table. After I built this table, I had a small cutting mat that fit on part of it and it was fine, but I just really wanted a big surface that would cover as much of this table as possible. So instead of buying just a gigantic one and cutting off a lot of it to actually match the table, I got this 40 by 60 one and it's pretty fantastic. It's black on one side, which I like. It's green on the other side. It's got a ruler all the way around it. It's got a few angles drawn on here that you can use for things. And it's a self-healing mat, so I can cut things directly on top of it and the surface is gonna be fine. Now I will say that this is probably the most expensive thing I have on this list because of the size, but if you don't need one that's quite this big, they become a lot more affordable. Over the years, I've gotten many different cutting mats to cover pretty much every surface because I'm constantly pulling out my knife and chipping something off or cutting something down and having good cuttable surfaces, most of the places that you can, is pretty fantastic. I highly recommend getting a self-healing cutting mat for your work table. Next up, let's talk EDC. Now, everybody's got their own preference as to what knife or tool they carry, which is awesome. There's lots of options out there. These are just the ones that I've fallen into recently. The thing that I always have on me and I use, I don't know, 100 times a day is my maker knife. This is made by my friend Jocko. These are fantastic. I'm not sure if they're still for sale right now, but there's a version two coming, so keep an eye out for that. This thing is just my go-to all the time. But I also have a multi-tool in my pocket and I've swapped that out several times. Now a lot of people like Leathermans. I've never found a Leatherman that really fit with me. I've always been more of a Gerber person and I really like the Gerber arm bar. The thing I like about this is that it's really thin and it's small enough that drops into your pocket and really doesn't feel like you have a big tool in there. The newer versions do have a clip, so if you wanna clip it onto the side of your pocket, you can do that as well. But the thing I really like about this is that it has a fold-out arm for a full-size screwdriver. It's got a swappable head in it, so you have a full-size bit there, which I actually use more than anything else on here. That is very handy, but it also has a full-size blade, it's got scissors, and on this end, it has a little pry bar thing. You can use this pry bar as a bottle opener or as a literal pry bar. I've taken nails out and stuff with it before. And then when you fold it down, you kind of have a hard hammering surface in case you need to use this as a hammer to drive a nail in. I've done that as well. This thing's pretty fantastic. And this is an older version. There are many versions of this with different tools on them. So you gotta make sure you find the right one for you. Comes in different colors. If you need more tool than this, 
I also used to carry the Gerber Crucial. You can see that this thing is pretty well worn because I kept it with me all the time. It's got a full-size blade on it with a serrated edge. It opens up and has full-size pliers on the inside of it. It's got a flathead screwdriver and a bunch of other stuff. This is also a great tool, but it's a little bit bigger, so I swapped this one tool out for my maker knife and the arm bar. All great options. I'm sure there's a bunch more out there. If you can think of some other cool ones, leave them down in the comments. Now it's time for number five. Next up at number four is a table saw blade, but this one is specifically for plexiglass and plastics. Now you can use a regular table saw blade to cut plastics. It works, but it also tends to melt and chip the plastic and it throws it at you. So you have hot melted chunks coming at you and it can be kind of painful and very messy. This blade actually shaves it or something and it is still really messy, but it's not painful and you end up with a much better cut on the edges of your plastic. Personally, I've always found it kind of a pain to swap the blade on a table saw. So I avoided doing dado cuts or I avoided swapping for this for plastic. But honestly, it makes a big enough difference that it's worth the little bit of hassle to swap the blade. This is probably one of the more expensive things I'm gonna talk about today, but if you cut plastic, even on a semi-regular basis on your table saw, this is worth having around. Next up, it's number two. So the next thing is a tape measure. It's actually a couple of tape measures. I've tried a bunch of them. I've tried the cheap ones, the expensive ones, the short ones, the long ones, and I've ended up on liking 12 foot tape measures. The form factor is nice. I don't really need much more than that in the shop. And if I do, then I'll just go get the 125 foot that I keep around. These are both 12 feet, and I like these for different reasons. The brand in this one is Comalon, Comalon? I don't know how you say it. Um, I've gone through a couple of these, and this is a brand new one, so it's in really good shape. But the thing I like about this is not only is it 12 feet, but it's also Imperial and metric on the same tape. Now, I don't use a whole lot of metric in my shop. I'd use it mostly at the computer, but occasionally in here, I'll have to convert between units. This is a great way to do it. It's nice to have one of these around, even though I don't use it all the time, it is very handy. Also, the finish on this tape is a matte, which I really like, it's nice and slick. Some of them have a really glossy kind of tape, like, like a scotch tape finish, and I don't like that at all. This one is really nice, and it's a plastic case, and the good thing is it's about seven bucks. This is a very inexpensive tape to have around, so get a few of these and keep them. Now, the other one I like is an engineer scale. This one's by Stanley. It's also 12 feet, and it's an engineer scale, and that means basically that it has both fractional and decimal numbers on it. I use the decimal more than anything else. This thing is almost always on the side of my pocket. I love this tape, it's nice and thin. I've got a whole bunch of them and it has a metal case. They are a little bit more expensive, but these things have never failed me. I've got a lot of these floating around and they all still do just fine. So whether you are a metric or imperial person, whether you are a fractional or decimal person, both of these are great options. I would recommend having them both. Now it's time for number eight. A couple of years ago, I built this little table saw extension that goes on the side of my table saw and it's got some storage in there. But one of the things that I really needed was a little bit more support for pieces of wood as I push them over. So I made this little fold up shelf. The thing that makes that shelf work and hold 300 pounds is a really cool little bracket. This is that bracket. This thing's really simple. You mount it to a surface and then you mount your shelf here. And then basically you just lift up on your shelf and it locks in place. Now a pair of these can hold about 300 pounds and it will stay there until you hit this little spring loaded release. It loosens it up and it goes right back down with no effort. These things are fantastic and I'm gonna link to this one exactly because I bought some other similar ones before that did not work very well. So make sure you get this kind. We're gonna go from brackets to number nine, glue. Specifically E6000. Now this is black E6000. It comes in at least clear and maybe some other colors too. But the thing I like about this is that it is the adhesive that I can use to attach anything to anything. There is a little bit of a cure time, so it's not gonna be as quick as CA glue or some of the other things, but if you need to put basically anything to anything else, this is a fantastic way to start. Also, once it cures up, it's got a little bit of stretch to it, so in a lot of 3D printed or prop situations, it's actually a really good adhesive to hold things together, but still give them a little bit of movement if they need it. There are different viscosities of this. I always stick with the medium, and like I said, I like the black, but the clear is pretty handy to have around too. This stuff's really inexpensive. You can get it on Amazon, Walmart, Michaels, all the different craft stores. You can find this anywhere. It's a great thing to have in your toolkit. 
Since we're talking about glues, I'm gonna give you a little nine and a half. This is Weldbond. Now years ago, I did a sponsorship with Weldbond, and so they paid me then, but they're not paying me now. I really, really like this glue, and it's the glue that I use for all wood projects, and I have ever since. It works just as well as every other wood glue that I've ever found, but the cool thing about it is that it dries clear. So you don't have that yellowing or even white stuff around your joints, you have clear glue. The stuff is really good, can be used in a bunch of different situations. You can water it down and coat things with it. This is a really good glue as well, and it's my go-to. You can see I buy it by the gallon and just refill my little containers. Now we're gonna move over to my electronics area for numbers one and 10, I guess, I don't really know. I have two things over here that have been very handy. Now, for soldering things, I've always used these little helping hands things and they work pretty well. They hold the thing in place pretty well, but I recently found a better solution. This is by Quad Hands, and it has these helping hand things on it that are magnetic. So it's a steel plate with magnetic ends that are very, very strong. And these are more of like a metal gooseneck. They really will stay where you put them. They can handle a little bit of weight. They have the same kind of clips at the ends, but this particular one came with short arms and long arms, and the plate is nice and heavy, so it holds the whole thing in place while you're soldering stuff. This was a little bit more expensive than some of the kind of plastic helping hands, but it's worthwhile because I'm never gonna probably replace this with anything cheaper. This is a nice sturdy thing to have at the bench. Now the other thing that I keep here and I use all the time is this tiny little glue gun. This is a cordless glue gun from Aero, and it does use the small glue sticks, which I don't like. I wish it had the big ones like all my other glue guns, but this thing heats up in just a couple of minutes. It charges through USB and you can easily get into a small space to insulate something with hot glue. That's kind of what I use this one mostly for. It's a really nice cordless glue gun to have around and I think it's pretty inexpensive. I'll have to go back and check. I don't think this would be my only glue gun, but for having around the bench to insulate things and get into small spaces, this is a pretty great one. I honestly kind of forgot how many things I've talked about, so we're just gonna do a couple more to make sure that we've got at least 10. These next two things are something that, thank God, I've never actually had to use, but I think everybody should have them in their shops. So whether it's you or somebody you love, make sure that these things are around. First, a first aid kit should be in every shop, but if you have a more severe trauma, you should have something like a clotting sponge. Something like this can be opened with your teeth held with one hand and placed onto a wound that's bleeding a lot and theoretically should help stop that bleeding until you can get the help that you need. And make sure you know exactly where it is so that you can find it when you need it. Similar to that is an emergency compression bandage. Now this is something that may take more hands to put on, but it's a way to add compression to a wound to keep you safe until you can get the help that you need. No matter what kind of shop you have, no matter what kind of work you do, be safe, please. Now the last thing that I wanna talk about is 3D printing filament. Now 3D printing filament is one of those things that can be a little divisive. Some people think it really, really matters, and maybe it does. If you're a pro 3D printer, you probably have opinions about it. I'm not, but I do 3D print a whole lot of stuff, and I've had great success with one of the cheapest brand filaments that I could find, and that's Overture. I think this is probably like an Amazon specific brand. I don't know, that's where I get it. It is very inexpensive and it has worked for me pretty much every time I've used it. I've got this in tons of different colors and a lot of different material types and they all work fine. One of the things I actually really like about this, in addition to the fact that it's pretty inexpensive, is that these days all of the rolls are cardboard. Now they're not the only brand that does that, but I think it's really cool that at least part of this process can be recyclable. This is also one of those brands that goes on sale pretty often, so if you keep an eye out, you may find two packs or multi-packs even cheaper than they are on a regular basis. This is a great option and it comes in a billion colors and a billion different material types. It's pretty good stuff, and if you disagree with me about that, you can yell at me in the comments, but I'm gonna keep buying it. So there you go, a list of a few things that have been very useful to me over this last year. I hope it is helpful for you in buying gifts or maybe just getting yourself some cool stuff. All of the links for those things are gonna be down in the description, go check them out. We'll also link our own website down there, shameless plug, we have lots of digital plans, we have merch, we have online courses, all that stuff's gonna be on sale this time of year as well. It'll all be down there, go check it out. Thanks for watching, happy holidays. Specifically, this blade is for plexiglasses and plex plexiglasses? <laughs> Plexiglass? Wow, that's a lot of water. So Imperial and Metric on Mech Metric?